Hello, my name is Ray Hawes. I'm author of the book, Touching the Face of God, the story of John Gillespie McGee Jr. and his poem, High Flight. Today I'm speaking to you from Washington, D.C. to commemorate the 75th anniversary of the writing of the poem, High Flight. The District of Columbia plays an important part in the story of John McGee and his famous poem. In 1941, John McGee's father was serving at St. John's Church, just across Lafayette Park from the White House. A good part of the reason High Flight became famous was because it was published in the St. John's Newsletter and noticed by Archibald MacLeish, the Librarian of Congress. After John got his wings, he visited Washington, D.C. for what would be his final visit with his family. While at home, he received a telegram informing him of his promotion to pilot officer. Because of his subsequent increase in pay, John felt he could fly to Boston and then take the train to Montreal instead of taking the train the entire route. John flew out of the then brand new Washington National Airport a bit over two weeks after it opened on June 16, 1941. Terminal A, which John flew out of, still exists today. Shortly after High Flight was written, it was part of an exhibition by the Library of Congress. After that, it was loaned to the U.S. Air Force Museum in Dayton, Ohio for a period of time, then returned to the library where it resides today. High Flight is stored here, in the James Madison Building, protected against further exposure to light and heat. It was here at this house on Bancroft Court in Northwest Washington, D.C. that John's family received a letter from their son who was serving with the Royal Canadian Air Force in the United Kingdom. This letter was dated September 3, 1941 and contained one of the most remarkable sonnets ever written. John writes, I'm enclosing a verse I wrote the other day. It started at 30,000 feet and was finished soon after I landed. I thought it might interest you. According to McGee's logbook, John took a flight to 33,000 feet in a Spitfire Mark I on August 18th. Flown just a few short weeks before the letter was sent, this had to be the inspirational flight that the letter was referring to. So it is that we're celebrating the 75th anniversary of High Flight on August 18th, 2016. I'm going to read the poem in front of this house where, in all likelihood, High Flight was read for the first time by John's parents in 1941. High Flight. Oh, I have slipped the surly bonds of earth and danced the skies on laughter-sobered wings. Sunward I've climbed and joined the tumbling mirth of sun-split clouds and done a hundred things you have not dreamed of, wheeled and soared and swung high in the sunlit silence. Hovering there, I've chased the shouting wind along and flung my eager craft through footless halls of air. Up, up, the long, delirious, burning blue, I've topped the windswept heights with easy grace, where never lark nor even eagle flew. And while with a silent lifting mind, I've trod the high, untrespassed sanctity of space, put out my hand and touched the face of God.